story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, king size, extra mild and soothing, brings you Dragnet on both radio and television. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. A 25-year-old man is found hiding in a freight car in a deserted train yard. In his arms, he holds the body of a dead woman. The victim's identity is unknown. The suspect refuses to talk. Your job? Investigate. Compare Fatima with any other king-size cigarette. Yes, compare Fatima with any other king-size cigarette. One, Fatima's length filters the smoke 85 millimeters for your protection. Two, Fatima's length cools the smoke for your protection. Three, Fatima's length gives you those extra puffs, 21% longer than standard cigarette size. Fatima gives you more for your money. And in king-size Fatima, you get an extra mild and soothing smoke, plus the added protection of Fatima quality. Buy Fatima in the bright, sunny yellow pack. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, January 18th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Warman. My name's Friday. I was on the way back from the record bureau, and it was 10.38 p.m. when I got to room 42. Homicide detail. Joe? Hi. Did he cop out to anything yet? Nothing. I keep asking him questions. Might as well be talking to myself. He might be in a state of shock. No, I don't think so. You got anything on him from her and I? No, he's clean. You and Stahl want to get over to the morgue, roll the dead woman's prints? Yeah, sure. Maybe you'll have better luck with him. See you later. Yeah, sure. Here's your driver's license, Gordon. Better put it back in your wallet. Gordon, put it back in your wallet. Now, look, son, I don't think you're helping yourself much by keeping quiet. There's a lot of explaining to be done here. I'm afraid you're the only one who can do it. Gordon? All right, son, it's just a matter of time. You're going to have to tell somebody sooner or later. Why won't you tell us now? Come on, what do you say? Well, look, son, I'll tell you the truth. I don't get the reasoning behind all this. We know there's nothing wrong with you. We know you can talk all right. You talk to the officers in the radio car who brought you in. You know as well as I do, you're going to have to explain what's happened here. You're going to have to explain that dead body. You want to get it over with now? Look, Gordon, if you didn't kill the woman, you haven't anything to worry about. And if you did, we're going to find out anyway. Who was the woman, Gordon? Will you tell me that much? What's her name? You know her very long? Did you know her very long? What was she to you? Do you want to tell me that? She's a fairly middle-aged woman in her early 50s, I'd say. Is that about right? Was she your mother, Gordon? Older sister, maybe? Any relation at all? What's the matter, son? You feeling sick? How about a cigarette? All right. Does it bother you if I smoke? I hope you haven't got the idea we're trying to trick you into anything, Gordon. We've got a dead woman on our hands here. We've got to find out why she's dead. Now, what do you say? No use looking up at the clock, son. We're stuck here till we find out about that woman. And that goes for both of us. Homicide, Friday. Oh, yeah, Jack. No, not right now. Ought to be back about a half hour. Yeah, half hour. Right, I'll tell him to call you. Thanks, bye. I got an idea, Gordon. Might help to set your mind at ease. Now, number one, if you think we're out to build a frame against you on this thing, let me tell you that you're wrong, and I'll prove it to you, son. I'm going to tell you exactly what we know about this case, everything. And when I'm finished, maybe you can fill in the blank spots for us, huh? What's the matter, your headache? Some aspirin in my locker there if you want some. No? All right. Here's 
all we know about it. Now, one of our radio cars, 1A4, answered a call from the night watchman down in the freight yards. He told the officers that he'd spotted a man wandering around down at the far end of the train yards near the west gate. Watchman only saw him at a distance, but he said he could make out the man and that he saw that he had a woman with him. She must have either been sick or she had too much to drink because the man appeared to be dragging her along with him. The two of them disappeared behind a line of boxcars on the siding. When the watchman went out to look for the two people, he couldn't find them. He called the radio car, and when the officers got there, they started searching. They finally found you hiding back in the corner of an empty boxcar there. You were holding that dead woman in your arms. There wasn't anything the officers could see that might have caused the woman's death. There were no marks on the body, nothing visible anyway. When they tried to question you, all that you'd tell them was your name and that you didn't want to live, that you didn't care what happened to you. Now, that's about the size of it, Gordon. Did I leave anything out? Gordon? Oh, yeah. There is something else. From what we could gather, the dead woman had been doing some drinking before she died. Matter of fact, looks like she was a pretty heavy drinker. And another thing. We know you and the woman got into the train yard down by the west gate. We know that you dragged her body across the freight yards to that empty boxcar that they found you hiding in. The heel marks from her shoes lead from the sidewalk through the dirt directly to the door of that boxcar. We could see where you dragged her body from the door back to the corner of the car. Now, that's the whole story so far, Gordon. You want to fill in the rest? Son, how about it? Who is the woman? All right, look, how about these items we found in your pocket, Gordon? This address book here. Is this the woman's name in here? Or this handkerchief with a lipstick on it? Were you out with another girl tonight? Were you, son? If you were, it might help to tell us who she is. Do you hear me, son? How about this lady's ring you had in your pocket? The name Elizabeth engraved on the inside. Does that tie in at all, Gordon? Who's it belong to? Homicide Friday. Oh, yeah, Frank. You get an ID on her? Mm-hmm. H-O-F-F-M-A-N. Two N? Right. You going out there now? Okay, take O'Donnell with you, huh? Right, let me hear from him. Right. No, no, not yet. No. All right, bye. That was my partner, Gordon. The officer who was in here with you. They took the dead woman's fingerprints. They've got her identified, son. It's Elizabeth Hoffman. Age 52 years, music teacher. Last known address, 5473 6th Avenue. They're on their way out there now to check it. All right, relax, Gordon. That window doesn't lead anywhere. Now, you want to take another look at this ring? You got a fair idea that it means something, Gordon. They examined the dead woman's hands. They know she was wearing a ring recently. Her name's Elizabeth Hoffman. Name Elizabeth engraved inside this ring. Now, look, boy, we're going to get the answer sooner or later. How about it? What were you doing with this ring in your pocket? Now, let me tell you something, young fellow. I don't know what's bothering you, but whatever it is, we're going to find it out. Now, get it through your head. You're in a bad spot. If you're not interested in helping yourself, then neither am I. The monkey's on your back. You're going to have to help scratch it off. Now, get with it. What's it all about? All right. Let's have your driver's license. Come on. Get it out. All right. I'll take it. Gordon John Miller. 2055 Malcolm Avenue, Los Angeles. Hello, information. Do you have a phone listing for 2055 Malcolm Avenue? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. 3-2-3-2-1-9-2. Thanks a lot. Put the phone down. You ready to tell us? No, I won't tell you. All right, any way you want it, Gordon. You can't call. Right. The candle won't let you. You can't call. All right, take it easy. They can't tell you. They don't know. Give me the All phone. All right, you sit can't. down. I said sit down. If you won't answer the questions, we'll find somebody who will. Give me your wrist. Now sit still. Now, the sooner you get it through your head, you're not here on a traffic ticket, the better. You're going to stay cuffed to that chair till we're ready to book you. I'm sick of treating you like a baby. <laughs> they can't tell you. They don't understand. They can't tell you. They can't be any worse than you. <laughs> now sit still there. <laughs> Hello, 
Is this the Miller residence? 2055 Malcolm Avenue? My name's Friday, ma'am. Police Department, Central Homicide. Who's this speaking, please? I see. Miss Miller, are you related to a Gordon Miller? Your brother. Uh-huh. No, he's not hurt. There's nothing wrong with him. Ma'am? Yes, he's here. We're holding him. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to come down here to the city hall. It's the city hall. Yes, ma'am. It's important. We'd like to talk to you. No, as soon as possible. Yeah. You can get in through the Main Street entrance. Main Street, M-A-I-N. It's room 4242 on the main floor. Just ask for Friday. That's my name. All right, thank you. Goodbye. It's your sister Lillian. She's on her way down, Gordon. It's not going to help. She doesn't know none of them. Know. Who's them? You mean your family? You shouldn't have called. They don't know about it. They can't tell you. Why did you have to call? You know why, Gordon. We gave you plenty of chance to tell us yourself. The answers have to come from somewhere. What answers? What do you want me to say? Homicide Friday. What? How's that again? No, I'm afraid you have the wrong extension. You want vice detail. Just a minute, I'll have your call transferred. Yeah, would you give this call to 2607? Yeah, thank you. I ask you, what do you want me to say? What do you want? It's pretty simple, Gordon. Just tell us what happened tonight, will you? She's dead, isn't she, Elizabeth? Yes, that's right. There's nothing else to say. I killed her. Why did you kill her, son? I'm not sure, really. I'm not. I think I felt sorry for her. I killed her, though. I know that much. You murdered the woman, but you don't know why? Yeah. I keep trying to remember. I, I can't. doesn't seem real. You've been drinking, Gordon? Yeah. Two or three days. We were going to have dinner tonight. We started drinking cocktails before. Quite a few. We never had dinner. What do you mean by we? The two of us. Elizabeth and I. Elizabeth Hoffman. Where were you drinking? I don't know. I'm telling you the truth. I keep trying to remember. No marks on the body, Gordon. None we could see anyway. How'd you kill her? I killed her. That's enough, isn't it? I murdered her. Please don't talk anymore. I'm sorry, son. That's not even half the story. You admit you killed a woman. You won't tell us why. You won't tell us how. They wouldn't let her alone. They kept hounding her. They drove her out of her mind. Come on, son. Snap out of it. That's not going to help any. All right, come on. Yeah. Now, what's it all about? What do you have to do with it? I've known her for ten years. She was my music teacher. Piano. Brilliant woman. Elizabeth was a real artist. You've been taking piano lessons from her for ten years, is that right? Yes, sir. Elizabeth was arranging a concert tour for me. South America this fall. She said she was sure I'd be a success. I couldn't fail. Concerts in eight cities all over South America. We were going this fall. We were going to leave in August. Mm -hmm. That have anything to do with her death? I guess so, in a way. She did everything for me, and I had to kill her. Only one who believed in me. I can't tell you. Last two years, I didn't have any money to pay for my lessons. She didn't care. She even fed me, took care of me when I was sick once. She did everything for me. Now, you know, this is pretty hard to understand, son. She did everything for you. Then why did you kill her? What makes you think that's important? She's dead and I killed her. You always ask why. It's not important how she died. It is to us. Now, how'd you kill her, Gordon? Why'd you take her body down to the freight yards? You should have known Elizabeth when she was alive. You never met a woman like her. Just wonderful. Talent. She was brilliant. Understanding. Great woman. Warm. No one like her, Sergeant. Great human being. She drank quite a bit, didn't she, Gordon? Yes. She drank. Reason for it, though. Reason that way with a lot of brilliant people. We drink once in a while. She drank more than that, didn't she? She had a reason for it. Who are you to sit in judgment on her? Elizabeth was a brilliant artist, great woman. Great! One of the finest musicians in the country, a great woman. She was a drunk and a bad drunk. Now, let's face it, son, you know that as well as I do. You're a liar. She wasn't. You're a rotten liar. Six drunk arrests in 14 months. That's what her card reads in the record bureau. Those are the only times we know of. Now, how many can you add to it? She drank. She thought it was the only way out for her. Wasn't any other way. Yeah, well, you're talking in circles here, Gordon. Get it straightened out, will you? You want to know why Elizabeth drank? 
Go ask my family. They'll tell you. They'll tell you a lot of things if you want to believe it. What can they tell me that you can't? Nothing. But they'll try and pretend they know liars. I don't want any part of them. And they don't want any part of me. Don't you live with your family now, Gordon? I haven't seen them for a year. I don't want to see them. Why not? Don't you get along with them? Your father and your mother? My mother's dead. Died when I was 12. Just my father and my sister. What's the matter? Don't you get along with them? I just want them to let me alone, that's all. Just let me alone. How about Elizabeth Hoffman? Your family know her pretty well? Yeah, they know her. They didn't understand her, though. I really loved her. She loved me. I don't think I follow you, son. I knew you wouldn't understand. I was in love with Elizabeth. She was in love with me. We were going to get married. You're 25 years old, Gordon. Is that right? Yes. Elizabeth Hoffman was 52. That's what our records show here. What about it? Well, 27 years difference. That's a little unusual, wouldn't you say? Well, what of it? Everything that's great is unusual. That's what makes it great. I loved her. Time didn't make any difference. A few years, what's that? I loved her more than any woman in the world. She meant everything. I didn't care if she drank. I didn't care if she was old. You, you, you don't stop being beautiful just because you grow old. Elizabeth was beautiful. Well, the drinking didn't help her much. I don't care about that. I'll still say it. She loved me and I loved her. Believe me, please, I loved her. All right, I believe you, son. Let me ask you this. Yes? You say you respected her. She was talented. You were grateful to her. She was generous. She made sacrifices for you, did everything for you that she could. Is that right? She loved you and you loved her. You were going to marry her. Yeah. This fall on the way to South America. Going to be married. What we always wanted. Elizabeth would have been so happy. So happy. Yeah, well, then why did you kill her? Yeah? Yeah, Frank. See you in a minute? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. There's something I think you ought to know. Yeah. John and I checked the boarding house the Hoffman woman was staying at, checked her room. It's clean, everything in order. Mm-hmm. Miss Miller had the room next to hers, shook his place down, too. Anything? His bags were all packed, looked like he was ready to go. Something else. Yeah. In the kitchen sink, bottle of poison. You are listening to Dragnet, authentic stories of your police force in action. Friends, more and more smokers, coast to coast, are switching to Fatima's every day. Fatima, the extra mild and soothing king-size cigarette with the added protection of Fatima quality. Prove Fatima quality yourself today. Compare Fatima with any other king-size cigarette. One, Fatima's length filters the smoke 85 millimeters for your protection. Two, Fatima's length cools the smoke for your protection. Three, Fatima's length gives you those extra puffs, 21% longer than standard cigarette size. Fatima gives you more for your money. And in king-size Fatima, you get an extra mild and soothing smoke, plus the added protection of Fatima quality. Because of its quality, its extra mildness, its better flavor and aroma, more smokers now insist on king-size Fatima than ever before. Remember, in Fatima, the difference is quality. Switch to king-size Fatima today. Ask your dealer for the bright, sunny yellow pack. <laughs> January 18th, 11.55 p.m. My partner Frank Smith and I continued questioning the murder suspect, 25-year-old Gordon Miller. While he freely admitted to the murder of his music teacher and fiancé, 52-year-old Elizabeth Hoffman, we still were unable to get him to give us a good reason for the murder. Whenever we put the question to him, he either refused to answer or he was evasive. We got the same results when we questioned him about how he killed the Hoffman woman and where he killed her. 12.20 a.m., the interrogation went on. But you ought to remember where you killed her, Gordon. You say the two of you left the rooming house, you stopped for some drinks, and you went for a walk. Where'd you walk? Down Arlington Avenue. We kept walking, and we turned off. We walked for a long time. Were you anywhere near the freight yards when you killed her? Can you remember that? No, I don't know. Like a nightmare. There's so much of it, I guess I don't want to remember. And what's the last location you can recall, Gordon? I mean, before you found yourself in the freight yards. Olympic Boulevard, I think. Someplace on Olympic. Kept walking and walking. I don't even remember why. You remember packing your suitcases before you left the boarding house? Packing? Yeah, I think I do. Elizabeth and I talked about going away for a few days, someplace out of town. I think we're going to go tomorrow. They checked both your rooms, Gordon, yours and Elizabeth Hoffman's. They found your bags packed, but there was nothing about her room that indicated she was going away. Everything was in order. Can you explain that? I don't know. Maybe she didn't have time, hadn't gotten around to it. 
I guess you found the poison, too, huh? That's right. I had got it two days ago. We thought about it. We even wrote a letter explaining why we'd do it. Yeah. We didn't have the courage, though. Neither one of us. We talked about it and decided to forget it. I've told you everything. There isn't anything else to say. Friday? Yeah. Oh, all right, Jeff. Send her in, please. You're Lillian Miller, is that right? Yes, that's right. I don't want to see her. I don't want to see her. She's your sister, Gordon. She wants to see you. Please, keep her out. I'll keep her away. Gordon? My name's Friday, Miss Miller. Come on in, please. Have a chair, won't you? Thank you. How are you, Gordon? In such a long time, how have you been? Chair, Miss Miller? Thanks. Poor kid, what is it, Gordon? What's the trouble about? Honey, what is it? Won't you even look at me? Get out of here. Let me alone. Get out. Please, Gordon, don't. I'm here to help you, honey. They called me tonight. They said you're in trouble. What is it? Let me help you, please. You can't help. She's dead. Now, will you go home? Elizabeth's dead. I killed her. Merciful God, no. Will you take her out of here, Sergeant? Tell her to go. You don't know what you're saying, honey. It's not in his right mind, Sergeant. I know he isn't. Please, Gordon, you have to let us help you. I called Dad before I left. He's on his way here now. We'll get you a lawyer. Don't worry, honey. It'll be all right. Everything will be all right. She's dead. Can you bring her back? Couldn't have killed her, couldn't have. Pounding her, torturing her. Why couldn't you let her alone? Why couldn't you let us alone? We only did it for you, Gordon, and we thought it was best for you. You fool, you fool. Say anything you want, Gordon. I don't care, but let me help you, please. It doesn't count what I am. Just let me help you. I'll get it. Okay, Jeff, thanks. Henry Miller, the boy's father. I don't want to see him in here. I don't know him. He's not my father. All right, take it easy, Gordon. Please, honey, try to understand. We only want to help. Who's in charge here? My name is Friday, Mr. Miller. This is my partner, Sergeant Smith. The handcuffs on my son. Gordon, who did it? Who put them on you? I did, Mr. Miller. The only way we could settle them down. Taking quite a bit of authority in your hands, aren't you? Get them off of him right now. No reason to handcuff him. Sorry, can't be done. I said take them off. I have a little influence in this town. I'll see to it that the police commission hears about this. Now, what's my son doing here, anyway? It's the Hoffman woman, Dad, Elizabeth Hoffman. What about her? She's dead. Gordon says he killed her. Dad, we've got to do something. Don't tell him anything, Gordon. Don't say a thing. I'll get a lawyer for you right away. I know what your rights are. Don't tell him anything. Did you know Elizabeth Hoffman, Mr. Miller? I knew her slightly. Can't see what this fuss is all about anyway. Woman wasn't any good to begin with. No good at all. You ought to be glad I'm handcuffed to this chair. I never thought of hitting you before. I'd like to do it now. Please, Gordon, don't say those things. As far as I can remember, you've been nothing but trouble. Now, either you snap out of it this time or you're on your own. I'm sick of this. Police stations, trampy women keeping you out of jail. Either you start to realize who's boss in this family or there's going to be real trouble. You'll find yourself out in the cold, you'll stay there. Get him out of here. Get him out of my sight. Please, Dad, he's not well. Try and understand. I've had enough, Gordon. I'll send a lawyer for you. That's all I'll do. If you make up your mind I'm boss, you can come home. If not, you can stay away. Now, figure it out for yourself. I don't care. I hate you. I hope you never forget it. I hate you. Dad. I'll see you at home, Lillian. It's a maid's night out. Lock the door before you go to bed. Please, Dad, we've got to help. Don't leave, Dad. Sergeant. Yeah. Will you lock me up now? I'm tired. All right, Gordon, just a minute. Frank, you want to stay with him? Yeah, okay. Miss Miller, you like to step outside for a minute? There's something I'd like to ask you. Yes, all right. You'll let me see Gordon again? Yes, ma'am. Come on, this way. Now, look. About this Elizabeth Hoffman, Miss Miller. Did you know her at all? I tried to talk to her. I even offered her money if she'd let Gordon alone. It wasn't any use. She'd been drinking. She wouldn't even listen. Kept saying she was going to marry Gordon. Well, what's the big attraction, do you know? I mean, between your brother and that woman. There's only one thing Gordon ever really wanted. He wasn't too interested in women, things like that. All he wanted was to be a musician, a great pianist. That's all he ever wanted. The sad part about it is he'll never make it. I think down deep he knows that. When he was a kid, Dad sent him to the finest teachers. After six months, they all said the same thing. Yes, ma'am. He'd never make it. Oh, he could play well enough, but he certainly wasn't exceptional. He never improved. He just stayed the same. And he started taking lessons from Elizabeth. She convinced him he had a great talent, kept telling him she'd make a great pianist out of him. The last three years, she kept promising to take him on a tour, Europe, South America. It never happened. I think Gordon knew it never could happen. I see. Can you think of any reason at all why he'd want to kill her? There isn't any reason, none at all. Gordon didn't kill her. He couldn't kill anyone, I'm sure of it. I hope you're right, Miss Miller, for your brother's sake. Would you excuse me for a few minutes, please? Yes, all right. You wait here. You sit down if you want to. I'll be right back. All right. All set, Joe? Yeah, in a minute. Gordon? You ready to go? I'd like to ask you one more question, son. I'd like to have you tell me the truth on this one. Yeah? What did you have in common with Elizabeth Hoffman? She was twice as old as you are. 
You gave up a lot for her. She didn't have any money. She was an alcoholic. What was the big attraction? Why did I love Elizabeth? Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's right. You tell me, Sergeant. Why do you love any woman? Why? Because you need him. You need him. You can't be alone. Nobody can be alone. I needed Elizabeth. That's why I loved her. There's only been two women in the world who understood me. One of them was Elizabeth. The other one was my mother. She died when I was 12. Now they're both dead. Both of them. Only ones who understood. Yeah. My father didn't understand. He never did. All he knows is business, making money, more money. That's why he hated Elizabeth. He was jealous. She understood me. She knew what I was like, knew all about me. When I was with Elizabeth, I was safe. I was happy close to her. There wasn't anything to be afraid of. I'd go to her just like my mother. I'd put my head on her shoulder and she'd put her arms around me. I wasn't frightened anymore. I was safe. Everything was all right, just like when I was a little kid in the night. I'd call out for my mother. She was always there. She'd put her arms around me and everything was safe. I wasn't afraid. I needed her. It was the same way I needed Elizabeth. Do you understand now? Now do you know why I loved her? Yeah, I think I do. Only one question left. Why did you kill her? I don't know. I really don't. Maybe I'll remember. Look, Gordon, are you sure you killed her? If she died in my arms, I must have killed her. Tomorrow, maybe. Maybe I'll remember tomorrow. Is Lillian still here, my sister? She's waiting outside. Did you hear my father, what he said? Told her to be sure and lock the door? Mm-hmm. Just like my father. They don't have to lock that door. It was locked 13 years ago. How do you mean? It was locked the day my mother died. The story you have just heard was true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 19th, an autopsy was performed at the county morgue, city and county of Los Angeles, state of California. In a moment, the results of that examination. And now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Friends, recently I had the pleasure of taking part in a benefit in San Francisco. While I was there, I met and talked to a lot of smokers who told me that they'd switched to Fatimas. They'd found that in Fatima, the difference is quality. Well, now I'm convinced that you'll switch to Fatimas for the same reason. Get yourself a pack of Fatimas tomorrow and compare them. You'll find they give you more for your money. An extra mild and soothing smoke, plus the added protection of Fatima quality. Remember, look for the bright, sunny yellow pack. Buy king-size Fatimas. The results of the autopsy performed on the body of Elizabeth Hoffman showed definitely that she had suffered from a chronic heart condition aggravated by excessive drinking. Cause of death was listed as myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle. Gordon Miller was released from custody and completely exonerated of the death of Elizabeth Hoffman. Eighteen months later, he took his own life. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Vic Perrin, Herb Ellis, Harry Bartell, Joyce McCluskey. Script by Jim Moser. Music by Walter Schumann. George Fenneman speaking. King Size Fatima has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Attend the Republican Convention on NBC.